Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We had already started a digital electronics series in which we posted videos that explain digital design concepts with practical examples that you can easily relate to, helping you grasp the basics effortlessly. We will be posting more videos to the digital electronics playlist in which we will also cover important questions most frequently asked in VLSI job interviews. These videos will also be beneficial to students preparing for GATE and other competitive examinations. We won't stop at just theory. Let's roll up our sleeves and get hands-on by coding the circuits in an open source EDA platform and see how these circuits are implemented in VLSI chips. Make sure you watch all the videos in the playlist. Hi, welcome back. Today's video and the upcoming videos will be about two more combinational circuits that is the demultiplexer and the decoder which are most often confused. Let's see what they are one after the other and then understand how they are different. In this video, we will see about demultiplexer, where it is used and the Verilog code for demultiplexer using the behavioral and data flow modeling. In the previous video, we learnt about multiplexer. Now let's suppose we flip the multiplexer and make the input terminals i0, i1, i2, i3 as the output and the output terminal as the input and retain the select lines. The resulting circuit is a demultiplexer with a single data input, many outputs and select lines. A demultiplexer is a digital device capable of forwarding a single input onto any one of the output signals based on the select lines. Since it is reverse of multiplexer, it has 2 power n output lines where n is the number of select lines and it has one input signal. Each combination of the control signal or the select lines specify to which of the output lines the input data d in must flow. So if it is 0, 0, d in flows to y0. If it is 0, 1, d in is available at y1. If it is 1, 0, it is available at y2. And if the select lines are 1, 1, d in is available at y3. Let's see a practical application of demultiplexer. For fast data transfer, data must be sent parallelly. As you can see in this first diagram, if you send data parallelly, you will need larger number of I.O. pins at both the chips, the transmitter and the receiver. Due to limitations on the number of I.O. pins available, data can be serialized and then sent. For serial transfer, you will need only two pins at each end. For converting the parallel data stream to st serial data stream, and vice versa at the receiver, you will need a parallel to serial converter and a serial to parallel converter. In communication systems, this circuit is known as SERDES or the serializer deserializer. Demultiplexer is used in deserializer circuit. Let us see an example of MAX 3882A deserializer so that you can understand where the demultiplexer is used. I have opened the data sheet of MAX 3882A deserializer from Maxim Integrated. This deserializer takes a 2.488 Gbps serial data and converts it into 4622 Mbps parallel data. The block diagram of deserializer is as follows. As you can see, we have a 4-bit demultiplexer here that takes the input 2.488 Gbps data and we get 4 output streams. The select line is obtained from the clock so data is split to the four output signals by using a 4-bit demultiplexer. Let's move on to Verilog coding of the demultiplexer circuit. Let's start with data flow modeling. So for represent by using data flow, you will need a gate level representation of the DMUX. The gate level circuit is as follows. As you can see, D in that is the data input must be connected to all the outputs Y3 to Y0. So it is given to all AND gates based on different combinations of your select lines S0 and S1. So when S0 and S1 are 0, 0, your D in goes to Y0. So when S0 is 1 and S1 is 0, it goes to Y1 and so on. From this gate level representation, we can easily write Verilog code either in gate level modeling or data flow modeling. Let's see the Verilog code by using data flow modeling. I have opened my EDA playground platform. Let's write the code for the module DMUX 1 is to 4 data flow. As usual, we need to write the input and output ports first. So the DMUX will have a single data input, two select lines S0, S1 as input and four outputs Y0 to Y3. Next, we'll also need these two NOT gates to get S0 bar and S1 bar. Once we've got S0 bar and S1 bar by negating our S0 and S1 select lines, we can go about writing the entire circuit. 
starting with this gate y0 the last gate it is the output of the AND gate whose inputs are D in, S0 bar and S1 bar followed by Y1 whose inputs are D in, S0 and S1 bar and so on. Once we have described all these four AND gates by using assignment statements, our code for DMUX in data flow model is ready. Let's get our test bench code and verify. We have got the test bench code here in the initial and begin part we are giving the stimulus to s1 and s0 and the data in we have set it to always be 1 after each tens time stamps we have changed the select line from 00 to 10 to 11 to 01 let's see the results As we can see from the results, when select line is 0, data in that is 1 is sent to y0, when select is 2, it is sent to y2, when select is 3, it is sent to y3, and when select is 1, it is sent to y1. So we have verified the functionality of our demultiplexer. This is the synthesized schematic of our 1 is to 4 demultiplexer that I obtained from Vivado. As you can see from the gate level model, we had 4, 3 input AND gates and here we should have actually had 8, 2 input AND gates but the synthesis tool has optimized the circuit and has resulted in 6, 2 input AND gates and just 1 inverter but the functionality is still the same. Here this D in S1 bar is reused for both of these. AND gates. So D in S1 bar, S0 bar for Y0, D in S1 bar, S0 for Y1. Similarly, D in S1 is reused for these two AND gates, thereby reducing the number of AND gates from 8 to 6. Next, let's see behavioral coding of the 1s to 4 DMUX. I've opened the EDA playground. Let's write the code for our module DMAX 1 is to 4 behavioral. We will have one output signal Y and two input select line and D in. While writing behavioral modeling, we shall choose vectors for these signals Y and select line as it will be easier while describing the behavior of the circuit. Let's now declare the ports. Since it's behavioral coding, we'll use procedural always block. Within the always block, let's use the case statements. Line, if it is 0, 0, data in should be at the 0th position, the others must be 0. If it is 0, 1, y1 must be data in so it is at the first position the other two others are zero and so on so we have described it behaviorally by using the algorithm now that the behavioral code is ready let's get the test bench and verify i've used the same test bench code except that this time the inputs and the output y are vector format so y and select line are in vector format simulation is as follows when select is 0, the output vector y is 0, 0, 0, 0001, that is data in 1 is at the 0th position. When select is at 2, the data in is at 2nd position y2. When select is 3, it is at 3rd, y0, y1, y2, y3. And when it is select is 1, it is at position 1, y1. So the functionality is verified. 
the synthesis schematic of the 1 is to 4D multiplexer and behavioral model is as follows. Note that this might look as a multiplexer to you, but the Vivado synthesis tool has generated such that based on select line, your output Y has a single bit as D in, the rest of them as 0, and the bit that is D in varies from the select line combination. So this is not the general MUX that we use. Vivado has generated it in a different manner. So the entire circuit now functions as a demultiplexer. That's it for today's video. Thank you. Let's look into decoder in the next video. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.